truth Really, that's all we know Keep it real and authentic This truth be told Only the truth Tune in, cause you gotta watch It's like you with us while we kick it in the barbershop Here to motivate and inspire Hosted by the real deal in the God Barber I hope that you ready, keep it funny and edgy Let's go, you already know Truth be told, let's go Welcome to another episode of Truth Be Told And this is your homeboy The one and only I mean one and only And I mean one and only The real, real deal um, Tonight man we, we are looking so forward to this show Green I'm just letting you know big dog This is the last show episode of season 12 big dog We've been season Hey 12, homeboy you, We've been at it You know what I'm saying We've been at it boy Yeah we didn't, a, we didn't did a whole lot of episodes, real. Not only have we done a whole bunch of episodes, but we had a whole bunch of laughs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little crazy moments. Yeah. And, you know, as we go through this month, which is we're celebrating women, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so it was intentional to have a couple of females on the show. And tonight, we're going to end boy. season 12 with a banger. Boy, with a banger, boy. Uh huh. With a banger, real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about some. Salmon and yeah, potato chips and you know we'll I get know, to that we'll get to that moment a little bit later. We you know well, I, I know good and hell well I ain't getting in no trouble by the law. Oh no, you better not get in trouble now. No, we can't get I can't get in trouble by the not law. Not tonight. Not tonight. Well, actually, you can. Huh? Yeah, you can. Yeah, but I'm gonna try not to. You you, not to. you scared to go to jail? Yeah, I'm scared to go to jail. I ain't scared to say that. Wait, hold on. You know when people three years you know, old. From the projects, you know, everybody from the projects feel like, because you're from the projects, you you tough. Right. Until you go to jail. Yeah. Then you're not tough. You're not tough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been to jail? No. Okay. No. And you don't plan on going? No. Okay. All right. Well, no. well I'll tell you what. I don't plan on going either. No. But just in case, Green. Just in case. You know what I'm saying? If something may happen. Yeah. And you go to jail, do you got somebody that you can go to? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first person you call when you go to jail. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Why did I do this? Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. Oh, my God. Before we get to the interview. Yeah. You know, we just, we just, Easter weekend just, just passed. Yeah. All right. And, um. We was talking about Easter in the shop, talking about, you know, going to church and stuff like that. And and I was saying a lot of people this week, mm -hmm. I didn't really hear too much about people going to church. I heard a whole lot about people going out, mm. you know, to party, mm. yeah. stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. and I was saying, man, maybe it don't seem like this year church was relevant from what I heard in the shop, mm. you know. And, um... Some people are saying, dang, Green, man, um, I don't think that's true, man. I say, well, I just don't hear people talking about church in the shop. They were talking about going out. Right. And um, I say, well, maybe people just realize rabbits don't lay eggs. That's, <laughs> you know, they lie to us. You know, they're talking about the rabbit lay eggs. So I maybe realize the rabbits don't lay eggs. So. And I told the people, I said, oh my God. I said, I told them, I said, well, I wasn't going to church right. this Easter. Right. Not that I don't have any, I don't have anything against church. And I want to let people know I didn't forget about Jesus. I just realized rabbits don't lay eggs. <laughs> so agree. I agree. forgot about agree. the damn rabbit. Agree, agree. Before but I ain't forget about Jesus. Well, agree. <laughs> Before, before let's go on to the show. You might man. get crucified, so we gonna go ahead and get on to it, baby. I'm just saying, man. Hey, man, listen, we're glad you're here, man. Rabbit, um, just make eggs, sure man. if you tune in, if you have not hit that subscribe button yet, what you waiting on? Hey, we waiting. Him, you know what I'm saying? It, we need you. We need you. Boy, you know? we need. We need. How many? How many? We need man, a thousand. Hey, man, we just need. Well, I believe like forty eight. We need forty eight more subscribers, y'all, to get a thousand. Let's do that tonight. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that. Do that tonight, man. So do it for Jesus. <clears throat> <laughs> if you know, <laughs> oh my God! All right, hey Green, not for the rabbit, yeah. do it for Jesus. Let's, let's get on to it, bro. Because the rabbit ain't real, real. No, 
No, let's let's do it. All right. Tonight we have a special guest. <laughs> Y'all cut up sometimes. We got a special guest tonight, and um, it's it's so funny that um, when you know sometimes as we go through who's gonna be on the show, mm -hmm. you know I come up with some folks. Um, you may suggest some people, and then mm -hmm. we kind of talk about it and see if it's a good fit for the show. And as you as we kind of discussed earlier, being that. We celebrating women this month. Yep. Um, we wanted to at least have some, at least one or two uh, women on the show. Yep. And tonight we have a special guest for you. Um, she's an attorney. Um, she actually is an attorney in Orlando, and not only she's an attorney, but well, I'm not gonna get into that. Let's just bring in. Bring maybe in, maybe we'll be bringing in. Then we can get into that. Yeah, she can tell us what she got going on. Yes, sir. From Pamela, Florida, though, or Bradenton, Florida. At least Manatee County. At least yeah. I know she's from Manatee County. Um, resides in Orlando now. Let's welcome with a warm, warm welcome, um, attorney, Miss Elisa Adamson Prophet to the show. Truth be told, Elisa. <laughs> In the house. In the house. How you doing? How you doing? Hello, hello. Good evening. And listen, don't talk about my salmon because it is delicious. That was butter on top, not potato chips. Yes, <laughs> well, hey, well, 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 since you want to bring it up, you know, she was just showing us before the show, everybody, just so you would know. She wanted to show us what she was cooking for her kids, and she said she had some salmon. And on top of the salmon, green, now you tell the truth what it looked like to you. I saw some greenery. Right? I thought it was a piece of potato on Like a potato chip. Yeah, like a potato chip. <laughs> From the view that we uh -uh. Have seen it. Okay. Let me go, let me go find it. Hold on, because y'all talking oh, about Oh Lord. Oh, she gonna yeah, really yeah, do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah she's she gonna really do this. Real. She from Manti County. Okay. Yeah, she yeah. came. Look, look, see? It melted. The butter melted, so now it's not a big old potato. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I just saw some chicken nuggets in there too. Now that don't match. Now that don't match now. That's going back. I got three kids. They eat nuggets. Oh. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. We hanging out. We hanging out. Hey, listen, man. We so happy to have you on the show tonight. Um. Being that you are from Manatee County, um, yes. I didn't know yes. if you were from the, from the from the from the hood though. I don't know what part. You might not really be from Manatee. Okay. It's two parts of Manatee. Okay, listen. So I, I I live between my mom's house and my dad's house. My dad lived in East Bradenton, and then my my mom lived in Parish. So I'm from the east side and the country. So I'm, I encompass all of Manatee County and all the beautiful things it has to offer. And I just want to say, it is an honor to be on your show during Women's History Month. Congratulations on 12 seasons, and thank you for allowing me to close out your season. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo That's awesome. We That's awesome. That, we definitely appreciate but that. Listen, but listen, listen. We are honored for you to take time out to even hang out with us tonight, man. You know, you're a wife. You got kids running around, beating you up right now and all they that. They are, yes, yes. Man, yes, they are. so for you to take your time to hang out with me and real on truth be told hey man i feel good tonight <laughs> yeah that's right and just yeah. so and just so you know um if you have anything to do just go ahead me and green to start talking we'll just take yeah. over the interview you just come back when you're ready yeah you let me get the do. listeners a disclaimer my husband's flight is delayed so i am home along with two-year-old four-year-old six-year-old they over there with ipads playing basketball but i may need to jump up a couple of times and be a hey, do what, do what you got to do. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this question because I learned that you are now an attorney. But not only are you an attorney, um, you are a defense attorney. Is that correct? That is correct. I have a, a law firm. Okay, look, look, look. And this is this is my number one job right here. This is my boss, Jaylen. Oh, this live this live show. So this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, this is this is real life. Um, I have uh, Xavier. Give him the ball, please. Please give him the ball. All right. Well, we so, know. I yes, love I, have, this. I, have a, I love this. I love it. I uh, I started my my career off as a public defender. First of all, I went to Florida State University. Go Knowles! Woohoo! I went there for undergrad and law school. Uh uh. You hating? Because I'll get off this show if you hating on the Florida State. <laughs> no, no. We. I'm this. Oh, okay. I was Southeast okay. Seminole. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 
So went to Florida State, then was a public defender, and then I started my own practice. So I'm actually a business owner. I have my own law firm in Orlando, Florida. We started it in 2010. Uh, so we're, 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 we're almost 14, 15 years old. So we've been in Orlando doing our thing. Uh, and yes, my practice is all criminal defense, on my personally. We also do family law, immigration, some personal injury. But in the beginning of the show, you were saying, don't get arrested. I hope you don't get arrested. No, but I always I know. tell people, if you do, if anyone does, keep calm and call home. That's H-A-W-M, having an attorney when it matters. Uh, I, I'm, I love what I do. Uh, people get arrested and I restore their dignity. I guide them through the process. It's a very scary, intimidating process. Uh, I talk to the family members who are oftentimes moms and brothers and sisters and they're afraid that their loved one is not gonna come home. And so it's my job to educate them and to try my best to make sure they come home. And while I can't promise that that's gonna happen, I can tell you if there's anybody who can get it done, it's me. I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm very good at what I do. And I feel honored and blessed to be living and working in my purpose. Well, let me ask you this, because when you talk about your purpose, um, I was also learned that maybe um, when you have, you know, sometimes people have an example. You know, when we in the home growing up, um, if you are, if your mom or your or your dad or maybe a close relatives is a lawyer or something or a doctor or something, um, you may get inspired to do that. In your case, you didn't have any lawyers in your family. Well, how how did that come about though? I did not. I had no lawyers in my family, um, but I did have people that were involved in the criminal justice system. And I saw how sometimes the system didn't treat them fairly. And so when I was, I mean, I will tell you that my mom kind of sort of forced me to go to law school. When I was graduating, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And she said, you'd make a good lawyer. So go to law school. And let me tell you this, listeners, listen to your mama. They know what they're talking about. Uh, because indeed, I did go on to become an attorney and I do love what I do and I do feel like it's my purpose, but it wasn't because, and I, and I did feel sometimes I was at a little bit of a disadvantage because a lot of people in law school, their fathers, their mothers were attorneys, so they were able to get that guidance from them. While I didn't have that, I did lean into mentorship from other people, especially African-American attorneys that could really guide me and help me uh, through the process. Okay. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, let me ask you something. So you say your mom, she's seen that in you. She, she did. That. She saw it in me. So, and she actually gave me, I didn't even remember writing this, but I was in like the third or fourth grade. We had a journal and it says, what are you going to be when you grow up? And it said lawyer. I don't remember writing that, but she held on wow. to that, you know, and so there's power in words. And I did write it when I was a child. And here we are today. <laughs> what? So, so. What what did you have an idea about what you want to do? If your mom if your mom didn't, didn't say you was going to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. what did you what, what you wanted to do? So I thought I was going to go into something with finance. I was um, always good with numbers, um, and I love talking to people. So I just figured it. I don't know. I was going to do something in banking or something, but I'm very glad that I I went this route. That's good. Well, sometimes when you when you said that your mom saw something in you, now mm -hmm. when I hear that. I think about maybe she was getting in trouble all the time and always had some type of a reasoning behind, you know, what her butt was doing and why she was doing it. So you were probably picking up those skills as you were getting your butt in trouble. So, I mean, was were you that type of kid that always had something to say no matter what? Um, oh, you yes. Know. Oh, yeah. Always got straight A's, but always in the comment section. It was talk too much, disruptive in class. Um, I negotiate everything, mm -hmm. everything. So I've always been like that. And so, um, you know, that, that is definitely something she saw in me. And, and having the gift to gab is something that I've had since uh, I was a kid. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Was now, good. now, were you were you involved in any, I mean, you know, coming through high school yeah. um, that led you to Florida State? Were you involved in any type of, uh, I know at our high school they have uh, the Law Academy. Or you did they have that app? But you went to St. Stephen's, right? You went to Brayden no, Christian. Brayden, Brayden, Brayden Christian. I'm sorry, Brayden yes, Christian. PCS, go Panthers. <laughs> no, I mean I was involved in like the National Honor Society, um, and then like student government, uh, and also like the Spanish Honor Society. I was always like running for some sort of office within the organization, but we didn't have like a debate team or anything like that. But um, okay, so I was always negotiating something though. <laughs> well. She, she was a straight A student too, real. Yeah. Well, you were straight A's all through high school. High school, yep. Mm -hmm. You ain't making that not one B. Not college, not college though. Not college. 
Oh, I, oh, I know good well you make sure it ain't in college. There's too much going on. Uh, well, listen. Like and Florida that. State, Tyler has on the hill. Yeah, you make sure it ain't up there. No. We, we, we heard yeah. about the hill. The hill, baby. Well, listen, well. It, ba- go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, back when I went to St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church, and the pastor would give you $100 when you got straight A's. So that was always my incentive. Because $100, I mean, it's still a lot of money. Back, but back then was a lot, a lot of money. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Well, St. Mary on First Street in Brayton? No, I went to the one in Paris. In the oh, the one in Paris. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Uh, what is his name? He, well, now it's Pastor Stephen, but Reva yeah. Lawson passed away. Yeah, Miss Lawson. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah that All was right. my pastor. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace to my man. Though. Yes, yes, okay. yes. He's a big factor in who I am today. So yeah. I sent him a letter when I um when I was in law school, and I just told him how like small things that you don't realize, like Easter. We're talking about Easter Easter speeches. Like that's where I learned how to talk in front of people. Being able to memorize things and not being afraid. Public speaking, a lot of people have a fear of public speaking. It's very normal. But I was able to conquer that from like being involved in church activities as a kid. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. What, uh, you know, I went to the other school in Gainesville. Yeah. Uh, they called it the school. I guess you uh, it's, a little, it's orange and blue. And uh, we have that mighty gator. Um, uh, you may have heard of that school. But. You end up going to Florida State. Yeah, why Why did you choose to go to Florida State? Because I know the Gators had a darn good law, law program. You tell you me know, why. It was. I visited both, actually. Okay. Um, I ha- got accepted to both schools. And I went and actually, shout out to Camille and Christina Evans. They went to Brainton Christian as well. It was mostly, uh, they were like the only other two black students there at the time, but they went to the University of Florida and I went to visit and I stayed with them. And like, as fun as they are, Gainesville was torture. I was like, who lives here and why? You can't pay me enough to do it. So yeah, I, I went, it just wasn't for me. Uh, but in all seriousness, it, it is a great school. It's not better than Florida State, uh, but <laughs> I chose the better school. <laughs> and, 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 and listen, you did, obviously. I mean, you did, you're doing well now. Um, yeah. When you were at Florida State, um, you were a part of that law program. and. <laughs> eventually became the president. Yeah, I was the president of the Black Law Students Association. Uh, so that was very exciting. And then I worked at a law firm called Parks and Crump. And a lot of people know um, that law firm. They represented like the families of Mike Brown, Trayvon Martin. Uh, when I was in school, we had a case, Martin Lee Anderson. That was like my first experience with like activism. Um, and they taught me a lot about like having purpose in practicing law. And so that was an awesome experience. And we got to do a lot of that stuff, too, because we're in the capital. So Tallahassee is the capital of Florida. And so I got to do things at the Florida Supreme Court. And I got to have interact with senators and legislatures and the governor uh, because I got to live in Tallahassee. So that was another advantage of being in Tallahassee as a law student. Yeah. yeah. Boy, boy, boy. At least you're doing big things, boy. Yeah, she's doing, she doing really big things. You met, you met all those people while you was in college at Florida State? I did. Yeah, so college, I mean, college is it's about learning, sure, but I think the, the biggest thing that you get away from college really is learning how to network, uh, learning how to, to leverage connections. Uh, it teaches you how to hustle um, in no way that I had ever learned before, and so those are things that I really appreciate about, about Florida State. So, so how you, listen, how you stay focused at Florida State when fam you is right I'm next sorry, door? Wait. My name has an S. It's A-L-I-S-I-A. Sorry. I oh, don't worry about that. We're going to get Desiree. We're going to make sure that's right. <laughs> I, I got you. Okay. I got you. <laughs> Say, hey, I so, got you. At least, at least, listen, listen. How do you stay, <laughs> how do you stay focused <laughs> at Florida State? You in college. Fam, you is next door. You got fam, you I- homecoming. You got the hill. You got parties. You got the moon. You got Guthrie's Listen, Chicken. I, what? You got, you got, what, Governor that, Square yeah. Mall. How you stay focused? <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I had a good time in college, I will tell you. I will also tell you, while undergrad, I graduated with no problem. Law school, I did get put on academic probation. That was my first time. I almost slumped out of something um, because law school was no joke. And I was still trying to live an undergraduate life in law school and go to all of those parties and do all of those things. I used to go to the set on Fridays. Uh, I stayed in the club. I had a good time, but I did have to focus. Uh, I got put. I, I got sent to the principal's office. The dean was like, "Listen, <laughs> you got one more chance before we kick you out of law school." Because, uh, yeah. 
and so I, I got my act together. <laughs> Hey, some, sometimes it takes that, you know. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it takes that, you know. Yeah. We got we got a guest in the in the in the shop today, and you know, as you know, I was talking about Florida Gator. She was happy to be a Florida Gator. Yeah, she's same thing. We, we you know, so I it can. Happens. Yeah, it happens. Well, look, I went to HBCU. I went to Ever Waters College in Jacksonville. Yes, I love so, it. I love hey, it. hey, we parted all day. Uh -huh. I ain't seen my eight o'clock class on Mondays the whole year. <laughs> So I, I I know how it go. Listen, I, so, I wasn't in no damn class. law class though. I didn't take no <laughs> law class though. So oh boy. So you end up graduating. What you end up graduating Florida State? I graduated from high school one, undergrad oh five, and then law school two thousand eight. Now you did law school at Florida State as well, right? I did. So I was there consecutively for seven years. All right. Mm. So when you finished up Florida State, you ended up going into the public defender's office, right? Working in there. Yeah. So I knew I was going to start a law firm when I was in. You talked about me being the president of the Black Law Students Association. I met a group of, of women who we knew we wanted to start a business. We were really successful in that organization. We were national chapter of the year, Florida State's organization of the year. We won all sorts of awards. And so we're like, OK, we work well together. Let's start a law firm but let's get experience first. And so I was through mentorship was told that either the state attorney's office or public defender's office will give you the most experience in the shortest amount of time. And so I didn't even really realize that criminal defense was my passion until I got that job. Um, mm. And that's when I really developed a passion for the de defense side of things. Oh, I'll, I'll just about to ask you, how did you get into a criminal but you just yeah. answered that question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted so, experience. You get in the courtroom quick. You get, you get. I mean, and there is. It is a lot of people. You know, talk about public defenders and say they they don't know what they're doing. And honestly, when I first started, I didn't. Like I was a new attorney. But I will tell you that just like there are good and bad attorneys, there are good and, and bad public defenders. And some of the public defenders are some of the best attorneys um, that uh, that are working uh but my first job was there and so i was i was able to be mentored but i was in the courtroom immediately a lot of attorneys when they graduate they kind of have to start just kind of pushing papers and they never really see courtroom but i was in trial my first trial was like within my first 30 days there and literally i got i got a not guilty verdict and i was like i gotta call my mom like i was just so excited but <laughs> <laughs> i had just I'm like, i got a client here that's like facing jail and i was just happy that i won so your first client, it was not guilty? That's it, was, good. it was. It was a possession of cannabis case. My defense was not my pants. My argument was that he did have weed in his pants, but they were not his pants. And it worked. Wow. Go ahead on. So, 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 man, listen, that, that's awesome. That's awesome to come out the box like that. At the box? Uh, the but box. you mentioned you mentioned something about, you know, there's a lot of public defendants that may not be as good. And I always wondered, is it because they have so many cases that they have to try to do and they can't focus yeah. as much time as they need, in which in terms kind of play out in the courtroom? Yeah, it can. Yeah, they are sometimes overworked and underpaid. It is a very thankless job. As a public defender, I can tell you how many times people would ask, you know, you're really, or they would say to me, like, you're really good for a public defender. Like, you should be a real lawyer. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so your clients oftentimes don't respect you. Um, the judges sometimes don't respect you. Uh, the system doesn't respect you. And so you're, you're constantly being told that you're not a real lawyer, that you're not a real advocate. And you're having to still fight for these people that uh, sometimes don't like you anyway. Um, and so it is a very humbling job, but it is a very important job because if you can't do work for the least of these, then you shouldn't do work for anyone. And so for me, it was just because someone may not have the money to afford an attorney doesn't mean they're not deserving of the best representation possible. And so right. it was really, really important. I took pride in being able to provide people with like excellent service um, that were paying $50. Now I can charge $50,000 instead of the 50 um but if i could have been a public defender forever i would uh but it, I, I gotta pay the bills so <laughs> um hey, that's boy. let me let me just stop you real quick i want to clarify something that you just said but you heard okay. she said it like it wasn't nothing real i know you're getting did, it did she say 50 compared to fifty thousand? she said it like it wasn't nothing okay you just gotta add a couple more zeros <laughs> Well, listen, 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 listen. I mean, okay, hey, really? let me move on. Because so I, I, I don't want to get, get in your bag, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to well, get me, in your bag, you know? Well let, well, let me ask you something, Alicia. Let me ask, okay, um, you, it's, it, to me, 
it's good and it's powerful to see a black female, okay, from Manatee County. That's an attorney. We don't see that a lot around here. And just to see you and your passion for it, I can see the drive. I can see the love when you talk about it. Um, like a black and white thing. Do you go through any kind of, I shouldn't say racism. Do people look at you a little different? Do they, like when you, oh when you show up in the courtroom, do, they, oh, do, you, the do you feel a little pressure? Do you feel like some tension? All the time, yes, there's definitely pressure. There's a lot of politics in it. A lot of politics. I have been confused for everything but the lawyer. I've been the, the defendant. I've been the court reporter. I've been the secretary. I've been the clerk. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. But it's just, um, it, it almost is fascinating how, like, I'm everything but the lawyer. Uh, which is, like, you know, it's just interesting. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I've also been welcomed with love um, in some instances as well. So it's not all bad. I mean, the good outweighs the bad. But, yes, I definitely have um, endured racism, sexism. Um, being, uh, well, now I'm, I've been in the game for a while. But when I first started, I was an attorney at 23 years old. I was mm. a kid, you know? And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looked at like a little girl. And so having to fight through that while you're really doing very, very important work and fighting for people's liberty um, was a challenge that I accepted and it, it just made me better. Um, you know, sometimes pressure just makes people work harder, make sure that, you know, mm -hmm. when I do open my mouth, something is coming out that's of substance. Um, and so it just made me make sure that I was always prepared and ready. Yeah, because the reason I ask that because, you know, every time you watch a, a movie or some kind of documentary of, you know, a black female that's a professional, a lawyer or, or even in you know, a service, or even a pilot, or even a musician. It seems like yeah. it's always something. It's always something that's tried to, to keep y'all back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. and you just answered it, man. I'm talking about you. You stay with it because it's your passion. And I, I always believe if you got a love for something, and you got a passion for something, you can overdo anything that come your way. Absolutely. And then uh -huh. just making sure that you surround yourself with the right people, right? I'm not the first to do this. Uh, and so I have aligned myself with people that um, I trust. And so when I'm having hard days, I can go to them and they can, a lot of times they've been through it. They can help push me through it. Uh, and so it's really, I really owe my success to, to the company that I keep. You are only as strong as the people around you, right? So I made sure that my friends, my mentors, even family that I, you know, I'm very, very connected with um, are people that are speaking life into me and building me up and, and um, you know, help propelling me. And that's what you know that when she said that your dad one time uh, we was in the shop talking mm -hmm. and um uh conversation came up about some of what you just said uh mm -hmm. if if you can show me your friends yeah i can tell you your future mm -hmm. yeah you know absolutely and you have to surround yourself around positive people absolutely you know so you can be positive in your in your life you know absolutely sure. yeah we were talking about that one day in the shop yeah I spend a lot of time um, speaking to, to, to school, to students. Um, that's another p purpose of mine, I feel. Uh, and being in the criminal justice system, so many of my young clients, it's not because they did something wrong, because we all know the difference between right and wrong. It is the company they keep. And so just as important as you know, don't steal, don't shoot people, don't rob people, don't have drugs. If you're with the people that do, you are just as culpable as them, especially in this system and especially as a minority. If you get pulled over in a car and there's drugs in the car, guns in the car, someone was doing something they're not supposed to do, we have something in Florida called the principal theory. You could be charged with the same thing. I have clients that are charged with murder. They didn't pull the trigger, but they were with the person that did. And now they're facing the rest of their life in prison. And so that starts from a young age and being mindful of the company you keep because practically it can save your life. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to I dive a little bit into kind of who you are as a person, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also being that you're in your position. I was watching in a movie that recently came out on Netflix with Kelly Rowland, um, and she was a lawyer and the painter. Uh, you saw that movie? I saw it, of course. I mean, did you see all of it? I saw all of it. Okay, I hope we ain't doing all that, but <laughs> let, me get to the, let me get to what I'm about to get to. I didn't see that movie yet. I heard yeah, about uh, it. Yeah, hey, hey, man, it's off the chain. <laughs> but... Um, do you have you had a case where you found yourself in questioning, right? Your morals, um, defending a client and 
how did you reconcile that situation? Absolutely not. Listen, law school was three hard years. I told you I almost got kicked out. Um, the bar exam, just to take the class, it was like $2,000 just to take the class and then you can't work while you're taking it. And then the exam itself was really, really hard. I did pass on the first time, but uh, thank God for that. Um, law school, I think, was maybe, I don't know, $100,000. Uh, and then you have to pass character and fitness. You got to do a lot to be a lawyer. Nobody is worth me losing that. It has yeah, not, that part about compromise my ethics. That's been very, very easy. That's that's not even questionable. And I tell my clients that that'll ask me certain things. I'm like, look, I, this is what I I don't have another. I don't have a fallback career. This is all I got. So I can't do it. If you want if you want a lawyer that's going to do that, like you don't have to take it up somewhere else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 have you ever had a case where maybe you felt that your client was guilty and all you the time. all the time not that's, that that's, doesn't matter to me right so my job is to protect the constitution and so whether or not you did something or not um it's my job to make sure that you're treated fairly through the process because even people that do stuff deserve fairness they deserve equity we mm -hmm. i mean we've all made bad decisions right but does that mm -hmm. mean you deserve the maximum penalty no right and so it's my and a lot of times they're, they're in situations because they're a victim of their circumstances whether it's their upbringing whether it's just being in the wrong crowd whether it's you know not having proper training or nurturing or love or being in abuse or being victims themselves there's just so many situations there is no one that's above finding themselves in the criminal justice system and so the state attorney's job is to prove the case so whether or not someone's guilty or not is is something that they're concerned with my job is just to make sure that my clients are treated fairly Right. So, so, do you watch a lot of a lot of uh, law shows on TV? A lot of TV shows that dealing with law. Do you watch that? Uh, do you do a lot of TV watching? I used, no, I used to, but no, I, I watch a lot of Paw Patrol now. That's yeah, a show. that's a little show about law enforcement. Uh, but like but, now, but someone like, kids. but see, but by you being a real a lawyer, when you do watch some of them shows, are some of them it's shows it. overdoing it? Oh yeah, they're very they're even the, the the show the movie he was just talking about. I can't even remember the one with Kelly Rowland. It's very unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. But they're still entertaining. Yeah. Like Law and Order. That's that's unrealistic. So like that's a part of my jury instruction because a lot of times when I'm in trial, people feel like they're gonna get like a Law and Order type deal. Like most cases are not sexy. There's not DNA. There's not video. It's just two sides of a story and the jury has to decide which one it is. So law and order is sometimes it's realistic, but oftentimes it's not. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you this. Um, a couple years back, um, I was living this man. I don't know. A couple years back, I was in Ruskin. I was living in a different spot. And I actually had someone that was staying over at my house for a couple of days. And just so happened during that time period, um, Trayvon Martin case was going on yep. and I, I, I was, I just, something in me just felt like while the whole world, well, I ain't gonna say the whole world seemed like the whole black community seemed like felt as if this guy was guilty. And, yep. I, and in my case, I, I think I felt he was guilty, but for some reason, I just felt like at the end of the day, that has to be proven and that he was yep. probably going to get off. Um, on this particular case here, I saw that you were a TV analyst for one of the news stations, and yeah. you were giving some insight to that case. You were giving some insight to what was kind of going on the day to day, what's going on in the court case today. How did you feel about that? I mean, I mean, well, how did you honestly feel about that? Me, yeah, if you, if you ask me professionally or personally, it's two very, very different answers. Um professionally and my husband and I actually on one of our early dates we kind of got into it about this because I felt like the jury got it right uh, I think at the end of the day um, they were presented a case um, there's one person that saw what happened it's George Zimmerman he gave his story that it was self-defense and the other person that could give the other side of the story unfortunately was Trayvon and he's dead and so with the self-defense claim and no one to re refute it I can see why the jury came to that conclusion. Now, I told you my relationship with the attorney on that case. I had met Trayvon Martin's parents multiple times. And so being on that show, being is my it was my job as a legal analyst just to break down the law, black and white, right? As soon as that last episode aired, I, I mean, it was live TV. They turned the cameras off and I wept 
because personally, I thought that he committed a crime. Personally, mm -hmm. I thought that he took Trayvon Mar Martin's life unjustly, unfairly. Uh, I think that he's a horrible, horrible person. And I just, I will say though, that the way that our system is set up, is that you are innocent until proven guilty and the state attorney has to prove a case beyond and to the exclusion of all reasonable doubt. And if there's any doubt, you have to find somebody not guilty. And while in that moment, I wish that it would have been a little bit easier for the state attorney to do their job, the overall system should not be easier for the state attorney's office. You, The state attorney's office is trying to take away someone's liberty. So if you wanna take away my freedom, you're going to have to prove it. It has to be hard. And if we make it easier, I will tell you the people that are going to be disadvantaged mostly are the people that look like us. And so in no way, shape or form do I want the state attorney's job to be easier. I, that was just a terrible, horrible situation. Um, so per personally, I struggled with that because I definitely felt like uh, Jordan Zimmerman is, I don't even want to cuss on your show, but was a terrible person. Yeah. But now, but Lisa, but sometime, um, I don't know, but sometime do, uh, you know, watching court cases and watching the news about a case, mm -hmm. um, sometimes they can be misleading. They can have they can have the world thinking one way, mm -hmm. and you get caught up. You get caught up. We'll get caught up in watching TV, watching all these news channels, watching yeah. everybody say this and that, and then we'll have our minds going one way. Yeah. You know, yeah. but then we actually get down to the nitty gritty and we hit a real case from real lawyers and stuff, mm -hmm. then we get the truth. Right. Let but sometimes it'd be too yeah. late. We'd be already saying, man, hey, man, he guilty, he guilty, he guilty. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden, he's found not guilty and everybody blow up. It become a race so, war. Uh, let me tell you, let me ask you this. Have either one of you ever been summoned for jury selection? Yeah, I have. Yeah. And, but and I, how, did you, how did you feel? Were you excited about it or were you like, I don't want to go? Well, uh, I didn't. It was different phases you have to go through. I guess I didn't make it all the way <laughs> to the jury, to the courtroom. So they I, got I rid of me. You, they got rid of me after the classroom. I will tell you, one of the, I don't really get them anymore because every, most people know how I feel about this. But so many times when I was, when I first became an attorney, people would call me and say, "I just got a jury summons. How do I get out of it?" Right. Um, and they would get a long lecture for me because it's like, you can't sit here and complain about a system and say that it's unfair and say that it's unjust and then not go to jury selection because you wanna know who is excited about getting that jury summons? It's Billy Bob. He's like, yes, I'm going to, the, I'm going to get justice today. And so yeah. I can tell you as an attorney, so many times I'm representing clients that look like me and I have a jury pool full of white people. And there's nothing wrong with being white, but I can tell you that there are yeah. just think in the Trayvon Martin, I don't know if you remember, there was a witness, Rachel Gentile. She was the woman, she was the black girl who was on the phone with Trayvon Martin before he was shot. And she was talking, she was being cross-examined and her, the way that she was speaking, you could tell the jurors did not understand what she was saying. When she mm -hmm. was like, he, 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 I was just like, oh, what you doing on the phone with that crockle? And the, yeah. the jurors are like, wait, what, what is it? I know what that means because I've lived in her experience. And so what having, what, what jurors that don't represent the people that they represent, well, don't, don't represent um, the community is that they can't relate. And so I believe that Rachel Gentile's entire testimony for Trayvon Martin, which was really the only person who could really help him because she was on the phone with him, they didn't even take it into consideration because they didn't understand her. They literally hmm. did not understand what she was saying or understand what she meant by things. And so that's the importance of having black people respond to jury summons, because if we want to complain about the system, we're going to have to be a part of it. And I'm not saying you got to be a lawyer. You don't have to run for office, but that's something simple. That's jury selection. You got to go. You got to sit there because if it's your cousin or your brother or your dad or your sister or your mom that's being on the stand, you're going to want people that understand her and can empathize with her. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's I, true. I wonder why is it like that? Why y'all think it's like that? Why y'all think we don't want to go to jury duty? Why? Oh, my why God. I get like the that? call all the time. All the time. How do I get out of jury duty? And I literally cuss them out. I'm like, you, you got to go. Right. That's just that's the system that we live in, but it is very very common that people do. and I was like that too because it's inconvenient. I got to take time off of work. It doesn't pay. You don't get paid for it, 
And so it is a, it is a burden and it's an inconvenience, um, but it's important. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you about this. Um, mental health. Are you big on mental health? Uh, yeah, gotta be. Yep. I have a therapist myself. My husband and I go to have a therapist. Um, I'm a firm believer in trying to walk around because I can't see my baby. No, no problem. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Okay. Look at look at these two set up chairs. I don't what know what they're they getting ready for them what nuggets, they, baby. Get ready for them nuggets. For them little chicken nuggets. Yes, yeah, sir. They yeah. look like dinosaurs yeah. and everything over there, boy. They are. That's exactly what they are. Dino nuggets. Yeah, I, I I knew it. I knew I noticed. I saw it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so, sorry about that. They, no. Um, yes, it's important, but I understand why people don't do it. But well, let me ask you this. Um, have you ever had to defend somebody that had mental health is his, I mean, issues and had to kind of bring those things to light to help that person get off a case? Oh, yeah. We, do, we have a full mental health court. Um, we have uh, the therapists, uh, psychologists, psychiatric. There's all sort of programs that are involved with the criminal justice system. Uh, and so, yes, it is a very big part, and it is a defense for me. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mitigating factor. If you have someone that scores prison, it can help for a downward departure um, sentence. And so, yes, I'm oftentimes leaning on our medical health professionals. I can't diagnose. I can get the ball rolling and say, hey, I think there's a problem here. I'm not a doctor, but I'll have a specialist come in and do an evaluation. And all the time I'm using those evaluations for, uh, for my cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, I... Um... In 2014, unfortunately, there was something that happened on Florida State campus. And, um, I, you know, as I was looking at and, and reading about this case, um, they talked a lot about Myron's mental health. Um, mm. and, and Myron was, um, I believe he was a law student at Florida State, and probably you guys knew each other. Very um, well. And he ended up shooting some students at Florida State on the campus in the library. Yeah. Um, can you speak on what type of guy Myron was that you knew him of? You know, I actually, when it first happened, I, I was in shock. I mean, Myron was literally like the nicest guy. I knew him since my freshman year. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of black law students all so, so we all kind of know each other and so we knew each other from law school too and it was a shocker and I actually went on the, because I was a legal commentator I, I was often talking about things on on tv and I talked about him and I got a lot of I got a lot of hate emails and messages and like they were calling the law firm like how can you defend and talk good about this person like murder these people and it's like I get that too right and I'm I hate that that happened um but that's just not the person that I knew and so what I was really trying to highlight is the importance of mental health I wish I would have detected it or seen it um and encouraged him to to get help um it's just unfortunately not something that I was privy to you know it's somebody that you we weren't in the same city anymore, so I hadn't spoken to him in a long time. And I looked at because we had communicated on social media, and I looked, and there was nothing crazy in the messages. But All right. um, I think that it's important that you have friends that can kind of hold you accountable. And if you, because it was obviously he was going through some sort of mental health crisis, because that's right. not something he would have ever done. Right. Um, and so it's just really sad that he wasn't able to to get that help and felt that that was the only way out. Um, and you know, he's passed away as well, so it's just sad all around. Yeah, my goodness, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. And what, what, what year that was? Real? I think 2014, 2015, yeah. something we like that. Went into the library. I mean, and I can't imagine as a parent. I mean, I have kids now, right? And so, like, you send your kids off to school to get an education, and you're getting a phone call that they're in the library, the place where they're supposed to be, and you know they're just brutally murdered. And so it's 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 really sad. But I also think that our community and our system in general does need to put more resources in, like access to mental health. Um, well, by the time you hire me as a private attorney, you probably have money, right? So you, you, I, I'm able to tell my clients, like, go hire this doctor. These evaluations are four or five, sometimes $10,000. Not everybody just has that laying around. And so you got to be dependent on the free services, which sometimes it's hard to get an appointment. It's like, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever had someone that's tried to call these hotlines, but like, I had, a, I had a friend one time that was like, um, I feel like I'm suicidal. And I'm like, oh, shoot, like, what do you do? This was a long time ago. But I was like, I think there's a suicide hotline. 
So I'm like, I Googled it and I'm like, call this hotline. And then he called me back and he was like, yeah, they said someone's going to call me back within 48 hours. No. That's not funny, goodness. but I'm like, no. we stay reposting stuff. Like, if you're ever in help, call this suicide line. And right. Like, you right. call the line and it's like, oh, bro, 48 hours, I'm done. Right. 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 So you oh, got goodness. it. Like, and so I was able to, you know, call a doctor to be like, hey, I don't know what to do. And like kind of link them together. But it's it's rough out here um, when there's and these mental health issues are real. And so uh, it's, it's it's tough. So uh, at least I'm sorry. Real. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Have you ever. um. Have you ever worked for a family member? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got, you got some criminals oh, yeah. in your family? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't we all? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So listen, oh, listen. Absolutely. So let me ask you this, okay. Did you lose the case? I, hold on, no. I just about to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still here. Because <laughs> you, know, you know, if you're working for family, you know, the family... Want you to uh, win that case for them? They Absolutely, do. they do. They do. Yeah, no. I, if you I, lose I that case, well, ooh. The and they also want you to go pro bono too. What? Huh? What? That part. That part. Yeah. They and another back. question. Another question too. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure in your position. Uh huh. Uh, how do you handle? I don't know if, how many cases have you lost, mm -hmm. but if you did lose a case, how did you handle the backlash? You know, I, some people. Or call you and say, "Man, you didn't do your job. Uh, I've wasted my money." Blah, blah, blah. How do, how you handle that? So I've been really good blessed question. in that I have never lost a case where my client was not very much guilty. I, I went to trial on it. I will say there's one case, <laughs> and it's like, bro, I did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I did the best. Bro, bro, the best I could. Bro. But, you, but you know you did that. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen, I'm saying, I'm dead. I am not Jesus. I am not Jesus. Hey. I can't work miracles. Okay. Hey, I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said that. Okay. I know you done seen some cases. Guys hire you, and you be like. I know good and well. He don't think I'm going to get him off of this. <laughs> no, so sometimes that's what it is. It's like, look, I know the evidence is overwhelming, but help me, you know. And that's a big part of what I do is really just humanizing my clients. I have the gift of being able to meet my clients where they are, but then also speak to the judges and the state attorneys and tell them, you know, this is how we got here. Um, and really, like, I put together a package, I say that to my clients, like, when the state attorney's office gets your email, I mean, gets your case, the only thing they know about you is your criminal record and then the case. And so it's my job to say, no, this is who you really are. Send, get me some character letters, reference letters, proof of employment, certificates, certifications, doing things in the community so I can show who you really are. State attorneys are people too, right? And so it's easy for them to see something on paper and be like, oh, prison. They're like, oh, wait a minute. You, do, can, you give away turkeys every Christmas? You have a toy drive? <laughs> oh wow! You 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 have a you got an award from the something from somewhere. You got these people that are these kids that are saying you know thanks to him I had a Christmas. Okay, you know maybe they do deserve some grace. So, yeah. That's a so do you do, do you ever have you ever get a client that um you start just like getting close with him or her? You know you get like a relationship with him or her, and yeah. um and you really hope deep down inside. Uh, that you win the case for them. Oh yeah, some, yeah. Some, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of your clients you already know they're innocent. Yeah, when my client like that's that's those are the cases that make me lose sleep at night, right? I, very rarely do I take my work home, but um, I have some cases where like I know they did it, so it's like not that that I mean it's like okay I'm gonna do my best, right? But for my clients that really didn't do it, I'm gonna lose sleep because yeah. I'm not, that case is getting dismissed, and I can say in my 15 years of practice, anybody who I ever truly believed was innocent, their case has been dismissed because I am that attorney that is literally going, I had a case one time where like, I was in there fighting so hard. The judge was like, are you, she had me approach and she was like, is this, are you related to this person? I was like, no. And she's like, okay, cause you're really fighting. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. But, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's just how, for me, that's, that's because there, we, we are in a system sometimes where people really just get arrested 
falsely and then they just get caught up in this system and it's just like one one hurdle after another and mm -hmm. so those are those are the cases where i fight um to make sure that the case gets dismissed yeah so what's, what's your youngest client and your oldest client oh my youngest, youngest client, one you ever did my youngest client uh probably 12. 12. Uh, my oldest client uh, I had a client that was in his 90s. It was so sad. Oh my God, it was so sad too. He was walking his dog and he had a gun in his pocket because he lived in he lived in the hood and so he would just, you know, carry a gun, which he was allowed to do. And um, his he had like a little puppy and his, his dog like got loose somehow and jumped a fence and then ended up getting attacked by another dog. And so to scare the dogs off, he just took his gun and he shot it in the air. Mm -hmm. And then um, his dog ended up dying. It was really, really sad. But he oh. got charged with improper discharge of a weapon. I was like, what? This old man is just out here walking his dog. Anyway, his case ended up getting dismissed, too. But it was just so sad. But that was my oldest wow. point. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Alicia, boy. Alicia, good boy. <laughs> Alicia. Alicia need to come out with a movie. Yeah. You got a, you got a movie coming out yet? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, not Kelly Look. Rowland, baby. No. Uh, uh, no. Hey. <laughs> Hey, um. Look at these kids got their lollipops. They are yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell, hey, tell, we almost they, done. We almost done. They, we, they, they, they need, they need mommy. No, they don't want. They don't want it to finish. They like. Oh, take <laughs> <laughs> they hanging out, man. Hey, hey, listen. Do do you have? Can you tell me like one of your most memorable courtroom experiences that challenged your skills? Now that really challenged your skills as a defense attorney and it helped to kind of change your approach to cases yeah it was actually a case in manatee county i had a case in manatee county where um the father um and my, i won't say names but the, the, the father of the, the the two guys um was close friends with my dad they've been so i called him my uncle and uh so these cases are always hard when, when you represent somebody you know and um they needed a lawyer for some really really serious charges and so it was a lot of money i mean like a lot of money like house car money right mm -hmm. and i was like i can do it but it's going to be really expensive and you know he he started crying and he said you know so crazy we were going to buy a house and our house fell through and now i know why because i knew that i god was going to need me to hire you for this case and so they paid me the money and they were both facing life in prison mm. and um while the case is pending he dies the dad dies Whoa. and so now this mom husband has passed away and her two boys are facing life in prison and uh we went to trial and uh it was one of the hardest trials of my life because i believe my clients and but the you know the odds were stacked against us i'm in a county even though i'm from bradenton i live in orlando so i don't have the relationships there with the judges and everything so they're kind of looking at us like who, do, who does she think she is coming into our coming into our town and um and my husband just um, and so, <laughs> Go ahead. I'm on a podcast. Hello, dear. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so we go to trial. We're in trial, and jury comes back not guilty. And I mean, I just fell wow. Wow. to my knees because the you know this these people had you know not sacrificed having a house to hire me. Father passes away, facing life in prison, and I was able to get that victory. So yeah, it was it was hard. It was like a week long trial. I did not sleep. I did not eat. It was tough, but um, it just made me realize that I really am that girl. Like I can do anything. Like, okay, okay. Wow. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. Man, I love Alicia, it. You got a movie coming out. I don't know who's gonna play your part. I don't know who. who I don't know who they gonna play. Who you think she can, can play a part? Desiree do everything else. Wow. Like, well. <laughs> yeah, Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what? No, what my lady name? Uh, real, uh, uh, the lady from um, uh, Woman's King. Woman's King. What her name? Regina? The older lady, the, the main character. Yeah, what her name? Oh, she's not. She's not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't yes, know. She do for Woman's King. She too dark though. We need somebody that's going. about light skin. Yeah, Halle yeah. Berry. Maybe. Halle Berry. We need to put a wig on her. Yeah. So, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody younger too, though. We gotta be. Nah, I can't be one of them city girls. Can't be one of them city girls. Can't do it now. I ain't doing nothing. Not them city girls. Can't do that now. Really. Hey, listen. So throughout, nah. we we about to wrap this up. But throughout your time, like, what's some of the? 
I mean, we don't mean a name drop, but your experience have led you in contact with many other different people, right? Um, I know I saw you pictured with President Obama, yep. um, Bill Crump, um, who else? Biden. Who, I mean, what you got going on? <laughs> who you done met throughout your life since you've been a professional lawyer? Who you done uh, met? And who was the biggest, your biggest star that you met? I mean, really, my, my biggest stars are my clients, right? Because they're they're trusting me with the most important thing, um, and that's their life, their life, their freedom. And so that's that's the humbling part about my job. As far as like celebrities, um, I mean, I would love to meet Beyonce. I did not meet her, but I went to her last concert, Renaissance, and she said my name twice because it was my birthday and I had a sign, and she said Happy Birthday, Beyonce. So I feel like that was a, a somewhat okay. of a meeting. But yes, I have met Obama, Bill Clinton. Um, Joe Biden. Um, I actually worked on the Biden campaign. So I've done, I mean, this career has afforded me um, a tremendous amount of opportunities to meet those types of people. Um, but it's really, it's, it's really just the importance of what you do with those connections, right? And it's how you can leverage that and how you can use that to bless your people. And so that's, that's what I've been trying to do all these years. That's, that's awesome. good, man. I, I got one more. That's what I want to ask you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see, I see your husband. He came. Yes. <laughs> you finally home. Uh, former NBA player. Uh-huh. Played for the Lakers, didn't he? The Lakers and uh -huh. the Wizards and all that. Okay. Uh -huh. You got an NBA husband. Uh -huh. You a lawyer. You got mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. How you balance all that? How you, I mean, when you have time to to be a, a, a wife or a, a friend or a mother, mm -hmm. how you have time to do all that? Uh, it is God's grace, and it's also realizing that not everything's perfect. I mean, you just saw like there's candy on the floor, like the house kind of looks crazy. Um, I I picked the most amazing partner, mm -hmm. and so that's the, and I go, you know, I talked about like the, the company you keep, like the most important relationship, the most important decision you can make is who you marry, and so I am so blessed. Um, that God put this man in my life, but he's a great, like, right, I'm sure he's like, what the hell is going on? Cause he just walked in the house and it looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yes, I am. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's really, it's balance, right? So it's, you know, some days I'm not the best wife. Some days I'm not the best mom. Some days I'm not the best lawyer, but at the end of the day, um, I have a support system that kind of picks up. I have a law partner that is amazing we have a great staff at our, our law firm home shout out to team home um i have a great husband so he's a great partner great family great friends and so ultimately like it's my system that that helps me kind of keep it all together yeah. well listen good, man. That's listen, good, man. listen listen i'm i'm gonna give you a hand right now i mean we about to close out i mean this uh, this, this, this has been really awesome i've learned a lot uh, and like i said man you know each time we have someone on we hope someone pulls away um, or being inspired in some type of way, and I'm I'm pretty sure you nailed it. Um, yeah. One thing that we do um, before we leave, Green. What, I mean, man, that's what I always say at the end of the show. Everybody could talk, but everybody don't tell the truth. And you told the truth tonight, uh, man. You was very inspiring, and I hope all the young girls and the older women will look at this show and learn that hey, man, you can be a wife, you can be a mother. And you still can't succeed in what you want to do. Absolutely. And um, we always, like like Alicia, what me and Real try to do, we can do sports every week on our podcast. Mm -hmm. But we try right. to mix it up because we want to let people know it's other things in life besides sports. Mm -hmm. You know? And um, you're a big inspiration uh, to me. Uh, like I said, I know your dad. I've been knowing your dad ever since I was young. He was my yeah. basketball coach at the Braden the Boys Club. Used mm -hmm. to come there with him. Used a little girl then. Yeah. I'm telling my age, and I don't care. I'm 53 <laughs> years old, and my beard white, so I don't even care. That's you know. Right. So, uh, right. man, it was good having you on the show tonight, man. And um, be glad you took the time out to hang All out right. with us on Truth Be Told. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate you. It's so much fun. Yes, it was. Hopefully, I come back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And before you go, just make sure you guys subscribe. Um and one more thing. Home law, right? Oh yeah, home yes, law. yes. If you're running from the police, immigration, or even your spouse, keep calm and call home. 407-802-3223. Having an attorney when it matters. 
Ooh, I like that Ooh. bar. She spit a bar. Hey, boy. and listen, that's hey. true. Be told on hey. the record this time. Yes, sir, on the record. <laughs> and we out of here, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys Hit next season. Button. We love you. Thank you. Peace. Yes, love you too. Bye. Truth. Really, that's all we know. Keep it real and authentic. This truth be told. Only the truth. Tune in, cause you gotta watch. It's like you with us while we kick it in the barbershop. Hear the motivate and inspire. Hosted by the real deal in the God Barber. I hope that you're ready. Keep it funny and edgy. Let's go. You already know. Truth be told. Let's go.